Welcome to this week's episode of Storytime. So glad that you could be with us. Um, the story that I'm going to read this week is called And Still the Turtle Watched by Sheila McGill Callahan and Pictures by Barry Moser. And Still the Turtle Watched. Long ago, when the eagles still built their nests on the cliffs by the river, an old man and his grandson stood behind, beside a large rock. The rock stood by, all by itself on the bluff at the bend in the river where the bright water flowed to the bitter sea. Here at our summer lodge, the old man said, I will carve the turtle. He will be the eyes of Manitou, the all creator to watch the Delaware people. And he will be our voice to speak to Manitou. In summer, you will bring your children to the rock to greet the turtle, and they will bring their children. And Manitou will bless our land with plenty, our people with straight bodies and strong arms, and peace shall reign beside our fires. And so he shaped the stone, and then the turtle watched. He watched the green of summer turn to gold of autumn. He watched the gold of autumn become the white of winter. And he watched the light of winter give birth to the flowers of springtime. Then summer came again. The turtle was happiest in summer, for then the children came, and then their children, and then their children's children's children. Year followed year. The great bear chased the little bear around and around the northern sky. Those are two constellations of stars in the sky. As time wore on, fewer and fewer children came to greet the turtle. Have I watched badly? He thought. Does Manitou, the great spirit, no longer hear me? The rains washed him. The winds blew him, countless snows chilled him, blowing dust rubbed him. Now it took a sharp and knowing eye to see the turtle. Then, one day, strangers came. They did not greet the turtle. They did not speak to Manitou. Their axes chopped and killed the forest. Their shouting drowned the lark bird's bright music. The turtle watched but did not understand. He watched a stranger, followed stranger, followed stranger. He watched white water turn to brown with pollution. He felt the air grow heavy with smog. He heard strange growling noises that made the songs of birds go quiet. At night, new lights glowed near the ground, and they dimmed the stars of the sky. The little turtle grew very sad. Why do I watch, he thought. Why do I speak to Manitou when Manitou no longer hears me? The air is dark and dirty. Stars are dim. All this noise hurts my ears. My children have not come for many times, many moons. And in the night, the turtle wept and cried. One day, some boys came near the rock. They stopped and pointed. The turtle's heart beat faster. The 
They've come to see me, he murmured to himself. My children have returned. Thank you. He watched them as they capered around him. Black boxes on their shoulders blared loud noise that hurt the turtle's ears. They pointed shiny round things at him. The turtle heard a hiss and saw a shining arc of color leap toward him. He felt cool wetness on his eyes. He could no longer see. He could no longer watch for Manitou, the great spirit. Deep in his darkness, he felt the breaking, cracking of his heart. The boys had spray painted the rock with those spray paints. No one watched for Manitou as days, months, and years passed and the turtle stood in darkness. Then one day a man came he knew that the Delaware people had once summered here and lived there. He hoped to find something they had left behind, but searched all day and found nothing. He was tired. He was about to go home. Suddenly, he saw the rock standing all by itself on the bluff at the bend in the river where the bright water flows to the bitter sea. Something about the rock called to him as it stood, forlorn, covered with graffiti. He was a man who could see beneath what first appeared. He had a sharp and knowing eye. He had a wise and loving heart. And he knew the ways of Manitou, the great spirit, and the ways of the Delaware people. turtle did not know the man was there. The paint had blinded his eyes. The paint had stopped up his ears. Then he felt a finger on his head and it stroked back along his carapace, that's the top shell of the turtle, and shivered deep inside. The man came back with some workmen. They pried the rock out of the ground and hoisted it up on a truck. The little turtle was very frightened. He did not know what was happening. The truck swayed and bumped along for a long, long time. Then the rock was hoisted off the truck. Hands patted and rubbed the turtle. He felt sharp-smelling wetness pour over his head, and his eyes started to clear, and his ears to hear as the paint was scrubbed away. No longer is he watching by the river. He is indoors at the botanical garden where the children come to see him. And they will bring their children and their children's children and their children's children's children. And he will speak of them, of the great spirit, Manitou, and how all things of this earth are sacred. And there's a note at the end of this book that says, If you live in or visit New York City, you can see the turtle at the Watson Building of the New York Botanical Garden. Weathered and worn, its features are no longer so distinct, although its basic shape and nature can still be seen by those who know and believe. So if you're ever in New York City and you visit the New York Botanical Garden, well, we're looking for this turtle. And I hope you talk to, about this story with people that you care about and love. Um, have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye now.